My name's Keith Chan. I'm a cinematographer and I prefer this title of being a cinematographer rather than director of photography is because a cinematographer is responsible for the overall image of the film. Well, the role of the cinematographer is really quite um, stressful. And there are many, many complexity involved being a cinematographer. But essentially, you're telling, you're helping the director to tell a story. And it's your role as a cinematographer to, to come up with the visual grammar, the visual palette, uh, and the, 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 the visual uh, images uh, in order to bring the emotional context of the film to the audience. Uh, I try to involve myself at an early stage so so I try to get them to send me the script and if I'm passionate about the script then I, I try to get involved with the production uh, such as get involved with the art department, finding out who, who the art, art director is. If, if, the story, if the story entails complex art design and this and that, so you want to work with the art director uh, as soon as possible. You, you want to be able to be at the right, a, a right wavelength with the art director. So whatever you contribute in terms of lighting, uh, it's succinct with the art department and the art department can support you in making sure what, what you need in, in terms of practical lamps and, and, and lights uh, provided. Uh, so I try to involve myself in the art department as early as possible. Uh, I mean, I started the, the, the passion and desire to, to want to make film at the quite a relatively young stage uh, during my teen and from, from there it's always been my passion to try to be a, 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 an accomplished photographer uh, in school and, and try to understand photography and everything, the technical aspects of photography. And then I went to university and, and studied uh, performing arts. Whilst at university I got involved with a group of like-minded people who wanted to make film and I became, became involved in their project. I, I got involved in their project to be a cameraman and trying to use that opportunity to create images, what I like. Uh, and then from university, I started off um, working in television. Uh, originally, I couldn't get a position as a cameraman in, in the TV station, so th there was a job role for a sound man, so I took on that role as a sound uh, recordist for an, a couple of years to be a sound recordist working with a news cameraman, so I, I started in the news industry working as a sound recordist for two years and then I had the opportunity to, to operate the camera and I remember my boss at the time uh, told me to take out the beta camera to go and shoot something. Uh, so I went out with a reporter and at the time the, the, the viewfinder on the beta cam was black and white. So I'm, I went out on the street and so I had to make a, a three minute story, you know, with the reporter. So I had this great idea of trying to make it quite uh, arty by using a sweeping shot and finding her and we see her feet and then we pick up on her and she walk into the frame and she start talking into the camera and then we, and I try to make her exit the frame in another arti artistic form and so we did a, a series of them and I thought this is great this is fantastic so uh, we, we can cut, you know, a three-minute story together. And so, but when I got back to the editing suite, uh, <laughs> the horror on my face, 
you know, I'm not, I recorded it in the wrong color temperature because it was black and white. And I, did, you know, and I forgot to put it on to the 56K uh, setting for, for outdoor color temperature. And uh, I had a, uh, a, you know, a, a massive, uh, so, so my boss just told me that complete rubbish, go out and do it again. So I had to, that was a good learning, learning curve. I think the when you're working with directors, uh, you you need to be on the same wavelength, and and you you have to tell the story with in conjunction with the directors. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have difficulty on set. Uh, so all, all those uh, conversation about the tone of the film, the mood of the film. Uh, and uh, the the lighting approach, uh, the the camera movement, and all, all the the visual grammar associated to, to make a film uh, needs to be needs to needs to be very comprehensive for the director. So the the, the ultimate control uh, of a film is a director. So the director decides. Uh, whether he's happy with the pictures or whether he's happy with the performance. Or, so all, all decision rests on the director and it's the cinematographer's contribution to make sure what you make is, is for the director. Ultimately, the director decides. I don't particularly specialize in a certain genre of filming but uh, the, the, the more different genre I make, then I tend to find that there are certain genres I do like. And, and I realize I, I like to make film much more uh, about um, human relationships. So genres of maybe of, of, of social importance um, uh, and also of political importance and those type of film, you know, but, but I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't specialize in certain genres. I can, I can shoot a, a horror to a, a comedy, to a, a thriller, to an action. So yeah, I think as a cinematographer, you have to be able to, to make yourself um, understand the world as much as possible. And, and through that understanding of the world, you, know, you, you can condense that with the story you're trying to tell uh, and using the, the image form uh, to, to do it to the best of your ability. So uh, testing kit is quite important uh, because you, you want to establish uh, wh whether the, the kit you're using, whether it's a lens, a filter, a certain light, or even makeup uh, works for the scene you're about to shoot. So I find, as I've been doing freelancing for uh, many years now, uh, there's there's not really. How 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 could you advise somebody who's about to enter the world of freelancing? Uh, it's this very scary world, that's, that's all I can say. Uh, but at the same time, uh, when you're first entering the freelance world, you have to start at the bottom. So you, you can't be too choosy on, on the project you work with. You, you have to be able to find work and pay the bills. Uh, but the more you do it, the more practice you, you, you do it, uh, you, you start to build up relationships with certain individuals and you keep connections with those individuals and through those relationships you know, hopefully more doors are open to you and, and when that happens uh, you'll be able to, to choose you know, better paid projects, uh, maybe projects uh, that you want to do, you're passionate about. Uh, Yes, as a cinematographer, I think um, you have to operate the camera. Uh, 
but on certain uh, productions, uh, very, very, you know, big American production, they tend to not have a um, cinematographer operating the camera because the responsibility of a cinematographer is it's ginormous. You know, it's it's too much responsibility. Uh, if you're operating the camera, you're not able to focus solely on the lighting and, and, and what the lighting's required. And so, so in that system, you have to work with a camera operator and, and, and either you inform the operator how you want it, you know, what, what, what way, what style to shoot it, whether it's a document, documentary style or whether it's a fixed form style. Uh, but in, in, in cases of where I'm involved, uh, many of my projects, I operate myself, you know, because I enjoy operating, I enjoy uh, s looking at the viewfinder and observing you know, and, and, and operating or, or responding to the performance of the actors. Good question. Uh, what advice would you give a, a new camera operator or somebody who, who wants to uh, work in the industry as an operator? Uh, the only advice I could probably uh, give, as I'm still trying to get into the industry and, and, and trying to, you know, work in the particularly the British industry or on bigger projects, so. I would, I would say, uh, keep, keep shooting, keep practicing. Uh, the more you practice, the more you shoot. Uh, you, you sharpen in your creative muscles, and and the, the sharper and, and the better you become, you become much more efficient in telling a story. So if if a director wants to tell a story in five seconds, you're able to, you know. Uh, pick up ideas, use the camera, use whatever lenses, whatever lighting, you know, to help him tell that story. And if the story requires a, a, a longer form way, then, you know, you just keep on shooting, keep on practicing and, and keep on doing what, what, what one enjoys. Reason production, I was uh, hired to be a cinematographer was on the film just noise and this was collaborating with uh, Italian director Davide Ferrario. Uh, it was r the story is about the Maltese uprising uh, in 1919. The biggest challenge was really the the budget of the film and, and the, the scale and ambition uh, on, on the script. Uh, for for us to for us to uh, for us to meet it was was important to find the right team members and luckily my producers uh, and my line producers was very helpful in understanding my need as a cinematographer we were lucky to find uh, good members to be in the camera team and the lighting team and through that, we felt, you know, it was a journey that we all had to uh, embark, and it was a worthwhile journey. So the the relationship between the team members got very close. Uh, so each day it was just a, a challenging day, and and we were having issues with with many things, you know, and. Uh, yeah, each, each day we just battle on, you know, and, and complete the schedule, what needs to be completed. And luckily we, we had no, we, we didn't run over time, we didn't have to do any reshoot. Uh, in fact, we had additional material, so the director had a lot of uh, options when it came to the edit. Uh, I think the only tips I could probably uh, give at the stage of where I'm at is perhaps uh, uh, not, not, to, not to give up. There's going to be uh, many times where you're going to get lots of rejections. Uh, 
and you, you're going to have to knock on lots of doors and you might go through lots of depressions you know you, you have emotional swings ups and downs but uh, the best tips maybe I can get you need to keep focus on um, what you want you know to do what you want to achieve in life and and if you can keep that focus and and just keep on going uh,